Hey everyone, my name's Scott. This is my first YouTube video. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing, but all you can do is give the old college a try, right? So, I've had a lot of people asking me about how I do a lot of repairs on people's projects. You know, things like broken propellers, uh, trailers, you know, they come in for car repairs, that sort of thing. Quite frankly, all I can tell people is you gotta just see it to kinda get it, right? Um, the problem with that is, very often, a lot of my work is solo, as in, I don't really have people come by while I'm doing the work, and part of that's because of the nature of the work itself, because there's lots of bright light, and sparks, and heat. Um, for the most part, it's not really a hazardous environment if you know what you're doing, but a lot of people don't, so my disclaimer here is don't try this at home. <laughs> I know you hear that a lot, I'm sure, but yeah, it's, it's pretty serious. I am a professional welder by trade, and I've spent years teaching kids voluntarily through Skills Canada. Essentially, what I'm doing now is trying to make a small channel just for people that, you know, like to do it yourself or like to have an idea of how to perform a repair of sorts. And depending on the job, for the most part, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but only for somebody who's actually done it enough times. So, again, it sounds, it sounds funny when I say it, but don't try this at home. Now, the first thing we want to do is assess our environment, make sure everything's going to be safe, there's no flammables anywhere. You know, that are nearby, of course, there's always going to be something, but make sure that they're at least isolated, whether that's out of the shop space or completely outdoors, off your property, whatever you can do. Make sure there's no flammables. Tripping hazards, it's something people don't think about, but essentially there's lots of cables and stuff when you're welding, and extension cords of sorts, they all add up real fast, so watch out for tripping hazards. Keep yourself protected with eye protection as well as a face shield, and I'm not wearing them now, but I'm going to have sleeves on when I start here. I mean, you know, this is kind of my style, but whatever. I'm going to have a, a cotton flannel, cotton polyester flannel. It should be cotton, but basically with TIG welding, it doesn't really create sparks anyway. As long as you know what you're doing, I mean, you can create a smoke show if you suck at it. Granted, you might see a couple puffs of cloud here and there just because of the, the nature of it. I swear I know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, yeah, for the most part though. Yeah, it's pretty tight. But just got to make sure that you watch out for all any other equipment that you could be spraying with metal or, you know, could otherwise be dangerous to be working around. Like, there's a pressurized bottle right here, and that's going to be a couple thousand PSI. Granted, I'm not really doing anything too crazy. I'm just... I'm pretty cavalier about it, but I'm just, I'm just fixing a propeller, so... Well, a pair of them. But the point is, yeah, you always want to be careful, especially at home. So make sure you wear safety glasses if you're doing any projects. Regardless if it has anything to do with welding, just anything, you know, just, you only get one set of eyes, it makes sense. But in the meantime, yeah, let's get to it. Alright, we're pretty well dorked up now, you know, what's up? Got the face shield, safety glasses, hearing protection. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so basically, I got this flap wheel, this is an 80 grit flap wheel. It's got enough bite to punch through the paint, but not enough to kind of screw up the project, which is a thing, by the way, especially when it comes to props, where you actually have to meet the edge, make sure it has a nice sweep to it. Otherwise, you lose a bit of the flow that could be potentially, you know, existing. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get our grind on. So the next thing we're going to do is get our TIG welder ready. If you're not familiar with TIG welding, the important thing to know is that it requires a torch, it requires a filler metal, and it requires a foot pedal. So yeah, to give you an idea, the plan is you hit the foot pedal to get your arc started and you maintain that. The problem is it takes a lot of coordination, which is fine, it just takes practice like anything else I guess, right? So for the most part, as long as you know what you're doing, it's actually, I would say, the best way to weld most things. Like, it's a very strong weld. You can do almost any metal as long as you got the proper filler. This is, this is actually 5356, which, 
would actually be okay. 40, 43, or 53, 56 would be fine for this project. So anyway, beyond that, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna swap out my internal tungsten here. This here. This is actually a permanent part of the torch until you remove it. And the idea is that this tungsten actually stays hot just like a light bulb tungsten. It gets up to thousands of degrees and what ends up happening is you create an arc with it. You use that arc to melt your metals and you have a shielding gas as well to prevent oxides in the metal. I'm not going to get into all that today but I might actually start putting together some welding videos. For me again I'm just cavalier about it but I will probably get to that point you know when I get more practice with the clips and everything sorted out. So yeah like I say we're going to switch this out and the reason why is because I want something a little bit finer of a size. I want something where basically if it's too big it's very easy to overheat and we're essentially talking about welding an edge onto that you know what I mean? So you don't want something too big for that. I'm actually going to go with a 1 16th tungsten. And all I have to do is just swap out the copper parts. Got my nice handy little kit here. That goes in there. That's all threaded up. There we go. And this is a number eight cup. For aluminum, this will actually be okay, yeah. Cool. So, essentially what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna get the rest of the connection set up. That means I'm gonna set up a ground clamp on the bench. I want it to be close to my propeller. You have the option of either clamping onto the propeller or you know, you can clamp onto the bench. I think even now that I'm looking at it, I think I'm gonna go ahead and clamp on the propeller because this is all still coated. It's actually a fairly nice propeller other than a little road rash and a couple chips. So chances are if I ground through the bench, it's not gonna actually make a very good connection. Even if it does connect, it's probably gonna make a bunch of sparks and smoke just from the paint. So forget it. Let's just hook it right up to the propeller. And once I've done that, it'll make the welding a lot easier. It'll make it look nicer. It's all gonna get ground down anyways. You'll see what I mean in a bit. But essentially, yeah, we're gonna get to the point now where we're gonna start welding. Before I do that, I gotta make sure I hook up all my connections, but I also gotta put my sleeves on. You don't want UV damage, believe me. Like, it's not bad when you do it a little bit here and there, but, you know, as a guy who's done it for the last 10 years professionally, you want to make sure you're covered up, just for all that exposure over the years. Even if you just did a few minutes here one day, you did an hour the next week, you did a couple jobs where, oh, my sleeves are in the other truck, or, you know, that sort of thing. Like, for me, I, I'm pretty good about at least making sure I'm covered up for the UV, and that's, it's seriously, it's seriously damaging to your skin. You'd be surprised at how much it burns after a couple days of solid welding, like with just a t-shirt or anything like that. You get all kinds of burns. This is a dirt tan, by the way, in case you're wondering. This is all dirt. I haven't had a shower after work yet. I've been, I'm a busy dude, so <laughs> eventually here, I'll, I'll have my shower and, you know, it's gonna be nice because, you know, it's been a hot summer this, this, this year, so. Anyway, I digress, doesn't matter. Let's get to the welding. Let's do it. So now that we're up to size, I'm at the point now where I can grind all this down. 
It's not built up very heavy, it's just enough to kind of give me some extra meat. But the idea is that I'm going to shape the propeller after. And uh, yeah, when she's done, she won't look too bad. You'll, you'll see what I mean. So as you can see, not looking too bad now that she's repaired. This was actually the worst one of the bunch. I don't know if you remember, but it was all broken out like right here, kind of like that, something like that. Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I've done this enough times that I don't really need to measure too much as long as the profile is about right. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's really damn close. So. I know my buddy who's waiting for these propellers will be happy. I'm at the point now where I just basically gotta give them a wipe with some lacquer thinner. And that's, you know, you can use acetone or lacquer thinner, either one's fine. But all I'm doing is giving it a wipe so that way when I go to paint it, it'll actually be kind of nice looking when she's done. You'll see. not take much. All we want is something that'll just kind of remove the dust more than anything. And you don't want to soak this thing in this stuff either because this will dissolve the paint if you if you let it. But anyway, I like to just kind of go around and give it a quick rough wipe. And then I like to follow it up with another wipe but with uh, another clean cloth. And ideally you want something that's lint free. I've got a lint free cloth I'll be using after this one. This, like I say, is just for getting the rough stuff. I should probably switch out my gloves too, just before I go paint. And honestly, it's, it's, it's nothing special, it's just spray paint, but still, if you have any dust, you'll see it. You know what I mean? So what's the point in putting all that work in if you don't try to make it at least a little bit nice by the time it's done, you know? Let's go ahead and give this one a quick one. A little more of the thinner. Let's refold that. There we go. The good stuff. Now, like I say, you want to be careful with this stuff because you can screw up things pretty easy, both with the welding equipment as well as the thinner. All right, I got a pretty decent wipe on there. Time to switch over. And now the lint-free cloth. I don't like to use thinner on these ones, I just like to give it a wipe. And the reason why is because quite often, after it's been thinned, there's really no point in getting more stuff on it. Wow, these are... <laughs> okay, I thought these were lint-free, but I guess not. Ah, I'll have to go find something else, hang on. Okay, let's try that. Actually, that's a lot better. I mean, this isn't exactly a Picasso piece, but I just want to make sure that my buddy's happy with it. You know, he's got a nice boat, and I've done work for him before, so... We don't talk very much here and there. We kind of say hey, but you know, it's just it's one of those guys. <laughs> he's a great dude, so I'm glad to help him out. And like I say, I'll probably end up giving this a light, light little sanding or something just on the edge 
just to kind of get rid of any any of these little flakes here. There's nothing really bad about this. It's just you know it just takes it takes another minute just to hit that with the sandpaper. But before we get any painting on, let's just make sure our profile is good. This one's actually got a nice shape to it. I'm noticing this one has a little bit of a dip, so I'm gonna actually bang it out. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, sweet. Okay. That's one prop. Give this one a wipe. And honestly, I wouldn't blame you if you fast forwarded through this stuff. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's looking so much better than it started. I have to admit, it's, it's looking pretty good. And that was the majorly screwed up section right there. That one was really bad, but you can see it's looking pretty nice. The only thing I gotta do is just get these little pieces of lint off, because apparently those lint-free cloths I bought are misleading. At least from what I understand. It doesn't matter. So, yeah, I'm gonna give these a quick little wipe again, and then I'm gonna paint them. Let's go take a look at these puppies, see how they're looking. Oh yeah. These are practically brand new now. Look at this thing. That's not bad, eh? Hmm. So I have one of the propellers that I fixed. And don't worry, they both look the same. They're they're symmetrical, it's tight, don't worry. Um, Basically, yeah, I think he's gonna be really happy with this uh, repair that I did for him, you know. For what it's worth, these pops aren't very cheap, and, you know, he's a good he's a good pal that I've known for a little while, so good guy. I figure this is a nice favor to owe each other, right? Next time I need one, he's one of the guys I'll talk to. Point is, yeah, no, it's a great little repair. It's on a budget, of course, right? But that's what I'm all about, honestly. I like being able to do a good quality repair in any instance where it actually really calls for a you know, a few more bucks, sure, I get that. But like, this, just throw some welds on it, grind it down, paint it, that's pretty much all that happened here. So, quite frankly, um, I think he'll be pretty happy with it. I'm happy with how it came out. I've done a lot of these, and this one actually didn't turn out too bad, considering, so, I've done ones where they were snapped right off and replaced the entire wing, and then had to shave it and actually measure it, and this one didn't need that. It was just, at most, maybe an inch. This is actually the one that had the most work right here. I don't know, it's, it's looking pretty good if you ask me. Point is, you know, don't really expect anything for the work. He's gonna be happy. I'm happy I was able to help him out and of course he's gonna have more things for me. Point is, yeah, I just wanna thank you for watching the video if you made it this far. <laughs> don't blame me if you click the, click the back button or refresh button or anything, but point is, yeah, this is my first YouTube video, so it's worth keeping that in mind. I would like to put out more content at some point, but you know, it depends on the projects. I have a couple of cars that I've been working on, custom custom setups, they're, they're pretty tight, so more about that later. But the point is, yeah, I'm definitely going to be adding more videos with stuff like little tips on welding, little uh, trade secrets here and there, you know. But uh, otherwise, yeah, you can expect some more content at some point or another. And again, thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, let me know in the comments, give me a like. Uh, if you feel like it's worth subscribing, I'd love that. Don't expect it, but yeah, no, it's... I'm kind of a car guy, so if you're into cars and you like uh, power tools and building things, I think you're going to like this channel. Um, again, first video, I don't really know if I'm doing every, anything really proper here, but we'll see what happens. In the meantime, thanks again for watching, and uh, hopefully we'll see you around.